Hi there, it's Sam from poodle.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is this one. It's a super simple Easter basket. And actually, I've never made this one before, but somebody sent me a, um, a private message recently. They said, Sam, can you show me how to, to make this? And they'd, taken a scre they'd shared a screenshot of something they'd seen on Pinterest that didn't have... Um, a tutorial or video to go with it and it's not it's not a complicated one but it does look like it could potentially be complicated so um, I said I wrote down wrote down for her and I said I think it's probably going to be like this and so you know I gave her some ideas but then I thought let's put it in a video anyway so super cute nice to do with small children who are at home have them do the coloring and you can do the scoring so I'm going to stamp first so I can let my flipping memento dry I keep forgetting to remember to let it dry and I'm going to do a bunny today although will a bunny fit on a two inch well ah, that'll be fine so <laughs> I have my bunny and I'm going to stamp him in my increasingly grubbying clear mount blocks I probably ought to clean them reasonably soon so I'm going to stamp that and I'm going to let him dry because he needs to dry because I keep forgetting to remember to let them dry and then I've got a piece of 6x6 six six, so 15 by 15 centimeter paper but whatever size you use you need to be able to divide it by three so you could do a three by three um, or you could do a nine by nine so long as you can divide it into three equal parts so in metric you could do um, seven and a half centimeters by seven and a half because you would score every two and a half centimeters and so on um, so so long as you can you can score your square into three equal parts or rather what will end up as nine equal parts you're good to go right where's my stylus gone let's grab a new one so obviously this is six by six inch paper um, so I'm scoring it at two and four, so at 15 by 15 centimetres, I'm scoring it five and ten centimetres. Like I say, it doesn't matter. It's the, the technique for it. So I've got that scored, and then what I'm going to do, and I, well, I really can't see, I can't see, so I'm going to have to go on this side. What I'm going to do is score, so I've got nine nine squares and there is a, a cross part there so I'm going to score from there to there just in the outer square all the way around and like I say can't see still can't see kind of see and there and there so hopefully, yeah, you're not seeing anything. <laughs> Would it be nice if you had been able to see? You will see when I pull it together. So I'm just scoring all of the straight lines. And then the centre ones, you just pull them inwards like that. Very easy. There's no cutting required with this one love a box or a bag that you don't need to cut um, but this has been floating around this type of box has been floating around forever I do recall it was one of my first one of the first things I saw on Pinterest because I was a Pinterest beta tester way back in the day um, I'm punching this as much as possible straight across the score line um, yeah this is this this bag has been around for a long time but I've just actually never made one and then when I was asked, how do you make this? Like I say, I wrote down the instructions um, or what I thought it probably was. And then I thought, possibly ought to make one. Okay, I've got a bit of glitter that wants to keep appearing. Oh, I found a dimensional back in my bed under my pillow the other evening. But I was getting into the bed for the first time that evening. It wasn't like I found it the following morning. So I'm like, well, that's been there for the last 24 hours. So... I'm just kind of doing a sort of a, a stitch technique on this bag, but it's all going to concertina and pull together, so it doesn't really matter which which direction you go in. You can go crossways, backwards, doesn't matter. Um, and so long as you've got enough to tie 
a bow of some description. That's all good too. But yeah, these could be fun for for children to make um, with them being at home. A nice little project for them that you could all do together. And they could fill them with stuff. You could make a cardstock one of these, I reckon. A little bit bigger, maybe reinforce the bottom. But you could put, if you made a bigger one, you could put crayons in them. Oh. Yeah, you could have small things that would be sticking out of there. I don't think I've got anything small handy. I know, I've only got long things. But, you know, short crayons might work. But if it was taller and sturdier. Anyway. Right. Last of the chocolate eggs. Oh. <laughs> Runaway eggs. <laughs> okay. So... You kind of have to feed them in. Oh, go! <laughs> Pause. I'm back. I'm so sorry if I scared anybody else. I scared myself with my doorbell. Gotta love ring.com. Okay. <laughs> and I normally turn it off for filming. Right. So, yeah, I was saying you kind of have to feed in and just fill the bottom first. And then you just come and fill in the sides. Look at that. I'm going to fit every one of them in there, aren't I now? There's none left for me. Okay. I'm a bit puffed out. I've run up the stairs. Okay, my bunny. I'm going to cut him first. Or her. I'm going to cut the bunny first. Because I wouldn't want to spend ages colouring. Only to, like, lob an ear off or something. So cut first, colour after. Because it's not like I've ever done that before. I haven't, you know lobbed an ear off a bunny before but I've cut I've spent ages colouring something and I've been fussy cutting and then gone and ch you know cut a very important petal or something off so I can't believe I'm fussy cutting twice in a week okay let's get rid of that bit yeah I just I've cut his curl off but that's okay we don't mind cutting the curl off, it's not intrinsic to the project. An ear probably would be. Or a foot. One of the girls in our team, she apparently loves to fussy cut and she will spend an evening fussy cutting in front of the TV. I wonder if she does training courses for that <laughs> how to learn how to enjoy fussy cutting i don't dislike it i will say that i don't dislike it um and i'm i wouldn't say i'm an impatient crafter i just like to see a result quickly <laughs> there we go right bunny cut let's zoom in so i'm gonna have a pink bunny because why not so I've pulled out a couple of pairs, so that's a flamingo, that's a flamingo, and that's a lipstick, and that's a lipstick. And I don't know which one I'm going to go with just yet, so I might mush the lot together. So I'm going to start with, do you know what, actually I'm going to start by colouring news. And insides of ears, and then I won't forget to do those bits or inadvertently go over them. I'm not sure why. Why did I get Smoky Slate out? I didn't got that for something. Right, so... Like I say, I have no idea what this is going to come out like. Mixing Flirty Flamingo and Lovely Lipstick. On my original one, I went Purple Posy because I've got Purple Posy on the outside. Um, But on this one, I've got all sorts of colours. So let's see what happens. Let's just play together and see what happens. So this is light, light, lovely lipstick coming in. And there's a cat in here. I can hear her tapping on my floor. Which one is it? It's Sorrel. Hello. Oh, just you headbutt me. No, no. I'm looking at... Oh, 
so to hell in the face. Oh, tail in the faces again. Right, so I'm going to do that and then come, come back over with some of that light flirty flamingo. And that's not blending enough, so I'm going to come in with some dark flirty flamingo. Ooh, that's better. Oh, that's much better. So, okay, oh, just coloured his teeth. I'm going to have to chalk marker that, aren't I? So this is light lovely lipstick and light flirty flamingo that's quite nice that's gone kind of orangey well it's gone very orangey but that's not bad okay a bit more of that a bit more of this that's all right isn't it didn't expect that. Okay, so I'm going to put some light flirty flamingo on his chest puff thing. Oh, oh, I know what I got that for. Bottom of the feet. Knew I'd got smoky slate out for something. Bottom of the feet. Okay, so dark flirty flamingo on toes. And just everywhere, I think, apart from that chest puff. I haven't shut the door on her. <laughs> she can come in. And I'm just going to... Well, I don't really know what I'm doing with this, but I'm just sort of putting it on bits. And then I'm going to blend like crazy. There's no right or wrong with blends. If you are doing this with, with children, you know, any colouring pens I think would be quite nice. So, yeah, I quite like that. That's quite fun. He has gone a little bit orangier than I was expecting, but oh, it's not bad. It's not ugly. It's not horrible. Don't, you know, don't hate it. I am, however, going to find a chalk marker and put his teeth back in because I can't open them. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it's quite cute. Quite cute. Right, let's get this on. So I need um I need my two inch circle punch. And I need some more whisper white cast off. Which there we go. I'm going to pop a hole in this and I tied this up. Silly Sam, I tied it up before I was meant to do. Look at she's <laughs> The older boys are upstairs. I'm filming this before my small boys, their school has shut. Um, and I've just got the two older boys and they've gone up, they're upstairs and she's gone up to shout at them. I'm like, let me come and play with you. Okay, a couple of dimensionals on the back there. And this is going to go over the top there. And that is a nice... Oh, I didn't zoom out! <laughs> oh, goodness, like... Did you see any of that? No idea. Punched a hole in a two-inch circle, tied it on here... And I've put the bunny so it sits over the top, so it's a little tag. Anyway, super cute project. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for joining me. And Sorrel. You can hear her. And I'll speak to you very soon. Bye.